Network. And today we are talking with Brittany. Many of you know her if you live in the Triangle and you also know her if you have been in Asheville and you know her if you've been in Knoxville because she has been at all our events as one of our speakers. said, hey, can you MC every event we do this year? Because we love to have her as part of our team as because she helps in the background. She has her own business and she speaks and she has her own journey and her own story. And of course, we get it with the virus making it so that we don't have any in-person events yet, yet, <laughs> potentially. And if there are, Brittany will be there. So I've known her for a little while. We live in the same community and she has a book. And she, I asked her to be part of a panel of vegan athletes to represent the everyday person, not the bodybuilder, not the person who like is the Olympian, but the person like you and me who decides, hey, I want to get healthier. Hey, I want to start working out. Hey, I may want to lose some weight. I want to tone up. I wanted to do something. And it's obviously a journey to do that. And she did it. So she has been part of our vegan athlete panel in multiple cities that has gone over really well. Sometimes an only vegan female athlete panel, which is even more inspiring because people don't really believe that females can you know, grow muscles for some reason, I'm not quite sure, on a vegan diet or a plant-based diet. So we welcome you here today and please interact with us. If you're listening, you're watching, Tell us where you're from, ask us questions, ask Brittany questions. We'd love to hear from you. So I'm going to throw this over at Brittany so she can tell you more about who and what she is and what she's doing. <laughs> hey, everybody. Helene, thanks for inviting me to speak today. Um, and thank you for just being who you are with the whole Veg Fest and the vegan community. Um, so I just will talk a little bit about myself and what I do. And how I got started on my journey to veganism, one, and just um, just on my journey to being healthier overall. And uh, this started for me when my aunt, she passed away from um, cancer. And during that time when she was in hospice care, that's when I started doing a lot of research on um, just how we get sick, <laughs> you know, and... <laughs> A lot of my family members, you know, if if you relate to me or if your family's like mine, you have a lot of sickness and disease that run in your family. Um, and frankly, I just got tired of seeing my family members fall sick to illnesses and disease and just passing away. And I was like, that's not, you know, that's not a future for me. That's not what I want to see for myself. So what can I do about that? How can I change the narrative, you know, within myself and within my family? So I just started doing a lot of research. And within that, re you know, within that time that she was in hospice care and I was bringing her all this information, like, hey, you know, we can beat this, you can beat this. Um, unfortunately, it was a little too late um, and she had passed away. But with that information that I learned, you know, while her life was ending, my life was just beginning. Um, and I started applying everything that I learned to myself, to my own life. And I didn't know how sick I was. <laughs> I was, um, my eating habits were poor. I was eating meat three, four times a day with every meal. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was bad. And I thought I was the healthiest person in the world because I was eating vegetables on the side and drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I didn't think I had any health issues, but I did. And, um, you know, I had issues and I'll just explain a few things that I was going through. Like at night, I would have these horrible chest pains and I didn't know what they were. They, they, if that, if a heart attack felt like the way it felt, then that's probably what it was. And it was so painful. It would wake me up in the middle of the night and I would just cry because it was just so painful. And I didn't know if that was it. I was like, this is it. This is, this is it. Um, so I was also, you know, had swollen joints, swollen ankles. Um, my skin wasn't the best. I didn't have horrible acne, but my skin wasn't in the best shape. Um, my hair was always breaking off. So I had a lot of health issues. And then I decided to, you know, make that change and change my diet. Um, after she passed away, I went home and I threw everything in the trash. All the meat, all the processed foods, 
everything. Um, I still had a little trouble giving up cheese because, as we know, cheese can be an, is a is a true addiction. Um, but I threw everything away, and people would ask me, you know, why wouldn't you, you know, give that food to somebody that was hungry? And I was like, well, the things that I learned, I would have felt like I was giving the poison to somebody else, and I didn't want to pass poison to anybody else because that that would have, you know, been sitting on my conscience. And so I threw all the food away and I went to the grocery store, bought a bunch of fruits and vegetables. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I knew I was going to eat it. (laughs) So, um, and from there, you know, things just started changing. Maybe I would say a few months or so into um, changing to a plant-based lifestyle. I went to the doctor and, you know, I got my physical and all that stuff. I wasn't expecting anything to come back, you know, as far as my test results. And, excuse me, and my doctor, she called me and she told me that I was pre-diabetic. And I was like, that can't be right. I mean, plants, you know, this is like the end, you know, end all be all, it cures everything. That can't be right. You got to run my test, you know, test again or something. Cause that's not my, those are my results. And she was like, yeah, it's yours. You know, that's, you're pre-diabetic. And I'm like, damn. So somebody lied to me. This vegan lifestyle ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, you know, once, um, I still, I still kept up with it. Um, a a few months later, I gave up the dairy, I gave it all up and I just was, you know, strictly vegan. And it was more, you know, which, you know, I was following Dr. Savy's lifestyle, doing a lot of detoxing, a lot of cleanses and fasting. Um, and maybe a couple of years later, I went back to the doctor, um, for those test results, because I was scared. I didn't want to go back to get a result to tell me I was, you know, you have full blown diabetes. And so, you know, I'm waiting for the test results and praying, praying, praying. And I'm just like, oh, please don't call me back with anything. And she called me back. She was like, everything's perfect. You're, you're perfect health. And I was, woo! Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this lifestyle is legit. But, you know, even without that test result, so many other things have changed. Um, I didn't have those chest pains anymore. My ankles and my joints and all that stuff were no longer swollen. Um, my skin cleared up. My hair was healthier and stronger and longer. My mind was clear. You know, it was so many things that, I, that happened for me that I wasn't expecting or even looking forward to that just changed my entire life. Um, and so now I was like, I got to get this, the word out here. Like people got to know about this diet. Like this lifestyle is everything. Um, and, you know, just learning about even animal cruelty and how animals are treated. You know, I didn't I wasn't really aware of it and how bad it was when I wasn't a vegan. And so it was like even after learning about all that, I was like, there's no way I can even go back to supporting that lifestyle, you know, eating meat and knowing where it came from and how it was produced. There's no way I could support that anymore. My morals, they just it just won't let me. Um, and so from there, it's just. That's how I started Prosperities. Um, and it, Prosperities is my vegan t-shirt company where I sell vegan apparel with, you know, vegan slogans and um, just slogans that just kind of get the word out there about this lifestyle. And so every time I wear a t-shirt out or a hoodie or anything, I have the best conversations with people. Um, I even have on a hoodie right now. <laughs> Animals are not ingredients. And that's what I 100% believe. And we don't have to eat animals to live and to survive. Um, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing amazing. I'm actually doing better than I ever have in my life. Um, and so as I, the journey continued, um, it was just, it was, it became spiritual. I tapped, you know, more into myself as far as who I, who I was as a person. And it no longer just became about a diet. It just became about becoming better overall as, a, as an individual. Um, with more compassion, more love, and just, you know, forgiving others, and just so many things that I just never, if you would have told me this is my lifestyle like five years ago, I would have said, hell no, get out of my face and go get me, you know, (laughs) go get your burger. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I can't just express enough how bad my eating habits were, and people still can't believe they're like, you used to eat whole pizzas to yourself. (laughs) Or like, you know, hot dogs sprinkled with some bacon and cheese, like just really disgusting stuff. Um, and but it's just, you know, it's a it's a lifestyle that I the only regret that I have is not doing it sooner. Right. Um, 
And so, you know, as the lifestyle progressed, I, I wrote a book about, you know, how I, I became into this lifestyle and, you know, how I was able to, you know, how it fixed my depression and, you know, suicidal thoughts and things like that and how those are no longer existing for me. And all of that changed because my diet changed. If my diet didn't change, I probably, I don't even know where I would be right now, to be honest with you. Um, and so my book, I just kind of dive a little bit deeper into, you know, what I was getting into, things I was doing on a daily basis. You know, I would do juice cleanses. It includes a seven day juice cleanse with um, affirmations to um, just uplift you and make you more of a positive person. And um, journal entries, because that was important to me on this journey, just checking in with myself, um, checking in with my feelings and um, just facing the trauma, you know, facing what it was that I wasn't facing before and just letting it out. And so, you know, now it's just about me. I, if I could do this, I feel anyone and anyone in the world can, because I was stubborn. I'm still <laughs> stubborn sometimes. Still stubborn. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if I can make these changes in my life, I feel anybody can. And, you know, I get great feedback on the book. It's really easy to follow. It's a very easy read. There are step-by-step -step gui um, guidelines for you. There's a three-day um, meal plan in the back of it. So it really guides you into this safely um, and guides you out of it safely and just gives you a jump start on your journey to health. Um, so recently I started to do a, um, I just started this. I started a Facebook group to join for people who purchased the book to join me in doing a seven day cleanse in which I run with it with you. We share our journal entries together. We share, um, you know, where we're struggling and we just, it's an, a community of uplifting people. And it's like a, we're all bonding over juice <laughs> <laughs> and and people in there are not some of them are not even vegan but them just experiencing the mental clarity and just the overall feelings of just feeling amazing losing weight um and it, it, it's not about losing weight the the cleanse is not about losing weight it's just it's about you just becoming a better person um, and so I feel like I'm on the right path. You know, I never felt like I was on the right path, but I feel like I'm 100% on the right path. And that's a little bit of, a little bit about me and what I do. <laughs> which, is, which is fantastic. First of all, hi, Patricia. She's, she's watching us from San Diego, which is pretty cool. Uh, we appreciate you checking in and joining us. Anybody else who wants to, you know, say hi or ask any questions, please do. Brittany, I want to ask you a personal question. Yes. I want to ask you how old you were when the doctor told you you were pre-diabetic. How old was I? Um, how old am I now? Let's see, right there. Right. <laughs> I, was I about 29, I think? 29 or 30. Okay, so pretty young. Yeah, very young. Too young so to be having those type of issues. Yes. Um, and I can't say that those issues 100% went away. But it went from happening almost every night to happening every once, several, every several months, mm -hmm. you know? So there's definitely been some dramatic change. And when I got um, the results from my doctor, because I went to, it's a, a doctor, I can't, Dr. Baxter Montgomery, I think is his name, in Houston. And he's a, he's vegan. He's a plant-based doctor. And so I just wanted to go because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a cardiologist. Um, so when I went and got my physical, it was very detailed and they put, um, you know, I was sitting in there with all these prongs coming and stuff, you know, connected <laughs> to me. And so, um, when she told me that, you know, your arteries, they look good, but they can be in better shape. And so that's how I knew that I had, I had to have severely clogged arteries when I, before I made these changes, because if they're in better shape now than what they were before, then I can't even, I don't even want to know what they were before to be honest. So, um, but I was, yeah, very young, too young to be having heart issues. Right. And then you said it was over a five year period that, I mean, you didn't give up dairy and I guess we know that it's, it's addictive mm -hmm. and that's one, that's probably if, if, if anyone asks, someone will ask me, what do you suggest I you give up? 
You know, most people think you'll say, oh, give up meat, give up meat. My go-to is give up dairy. Yeah. Because exactly. it's insidious. It's absolutely horrible for your body. And mm -hmm. it is probably the more difficult thing to give up because people say, oh, I don't eat red meat, but I still, you know, eat cheese. Okay. Well, you know, obviously everyone's on their own journey. And just so you know, we don't expect anyone to go cold turkey. <laughs> really not the best analogy. <laughs> to, to go <laughs> to give something up altogether 100%. Uh, you know, the way that we run with plant based network and triangle veg fest and such is that meatless Mondays, one day a week, lunch every day, whatever it is, vegan all weekend, whatever steps you take to improve your health is the best steps that you can take one for your health, two for the planet and three for the animals. Right? Right. So it's not a if you don't, if you eat a hot dog at a baseball game that we're going to come and knock down your door and say, you're not doing that. You know, <laughs> that's, that's not, that's not how we roll. <laughs> that's not how we roll on, on, in this group. <laughs> right. And so been surprised that, um, and I, I love my vegan community. I love my vegan folks and we can be very passionate sometimes. So passionate that we, you know, might drive others crazy. Um, <laughs> but you know, I've also been, attacked by some vegans because I haven't I'm not that strict person to say if you eat chicken right now then you're gonna get heart disease or something like that <laughs> but you know I've been known to say hey you know if you can't give up cold turkey right now that's okay start with you know minimizing one piece of meat at a time you know or something like that and so other vegans are like you're an apologist you're this you're that and I'm like, <laughs> you're so fun, people <laughs> So, you know, don't expect me to be that person that's going to hound you and stuff like that just to become vegan. You know, as much as I really want to end the suffering and things of the animals, we also have to be mindful for ourselves and, you know, put our health first as well. Because if we can't be here to be healthy for us and for our family and friends, we also can't be here to save animals. Um, that's very true. Yeah. So, you know, you can people ask what's the easiest way to start. And I would just say, start making your favorite foods and veganizing them. Mm -hmm. So if you like burgers, eat a burger. If you like nachos, make vegan nachos. You know, I mean, there's so many op you know options that you have now to not feel like you're missing out on anything. So. Yeah. The, the varieties of uh, alternative meats uh, analogs are, it's, it, it makes people who, made the decision to give up eating animals 30 years ago. Right. Look like at it and go, here, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, I've watched this. I, I'm, I'm that 30 year like person and never, ever, ever did I see a time where Burger King would have a vegan burger right? and Kentucky fried chicken would have vegan chicken. Right. I, Right. Never. I just, I, you know, you just, you know, <laughs> I, and, and, and that people who aren't plant-based or vegan are ordering it just to be like, well, hey, let's see what this is like. Okay. Right. You know, right. it, guess what? It tastes like a Whopper. <laughs> right. Because for some reason people believe that we just, you know, pulling grass out the ground and right. eat twigs in the trees. Arr, like, arr. I don't know. <laughs> Why people feel like we cook and we don't season our food. I don't get it. But <laughs> I don't I understand that, that either. Vegan, where I'm going to make you something that's not delicious. If I make you something, you better believe it's going to be good. And you know, I I I don't mind. You know, vegans. You know, they want to, you know, indulge in junk foods because they don't. Their whole mindset is just to not eat anything animal related. Um, and I try to stay away from the junk foods. If I see something that I've never tried before, I'm going to try it. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to. My goal is to try to, you know, eat more whole foods and eat more from home instead of eating out. Um, if I if I want to eat out, it's mainly because I just want to support the vegan businesses and I want to see them thrive and I want other people to go and support them. Um, but I do enjoy eating, you know, simple whole meals at home. And those are the meals that make me feel the best. Um, those are the meals that help me perform the best. Um, and that's just it. <laughs> so do you have an example of some of these whole food 
plant-based meals that you've been eating? Because I mean, we're home. So I know I've been cooking, I've been posting on my Instagram mm -hmm. all over, all over, like all over social media, some of the things that I've cooked yes. in the last like um, month, which has been a variety because I, you know, every single day I'm, I'm cooking or preparing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is some of the stuff that's your go-to? As far as a go-to, I don't even know because it's like, I just want to try new things all the time now. So <laughs> I recently, I love, you know, sushi rolls, not really sushi, mm -hmm. but, you know, um, vegetable rolls. So I've tried to make them in the past, but they just always failed. And I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore. But I was like, let me just try it one more time. And I, I killed it. I mastered it. Did. And I was like, this is going to be my, my for real snack. Um, and I just put, you know, some avocado on it, some cucumbers, some carrots, and I made a tahini sauce and drizzled it over, um, used some liquid aminos for dipping. So, and it was just really amazing. Um, as far as dinners, I love pastas. Um, and there's plenty like, you know, gluten-free pastas. I'm not really a gluten-free person, but I'm starting to notice like if I do eat something with gluten, my sinuses just start draining. Um, and I just get all clogged up. So i um, trying to just stay away a little bit from the gluten, but I don't make a big deal out of it. Um, but, you know, I, have some, I found some really good brown rice, gluten-free noodles that were like linguine style and it was delicious. Mm -hmm. And I made like a uh, coconut cream um, Alfredo sauce uh, with mm -hmm. some jerk sauce in it. And I threw it over some, some mushrooms. I know you hate mushrooms. I know. <laughs> No, I saw it. I saw the pictures. I, I, you know, I will still like it, even though it has mushrooms in it, but I won't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and some peppers and stuff. And it was so good. And I was like, damn, I outdid myself with that. So um, I love Indian food as well. Um, I love lentil dishes, curry dishes. Um, I've just been, I've been throwing down. <laughs> so I, I've been throwing down. Um, I've been eating and cooking and cooking and eating. So I did put on a little pudge so I'm like damn now I start working out a little bit more harder <laughs> so and I'm also tired of washing dishes I can say that much I'm tired of washing dishes but um I feel really good though I feel really good despite you know everything that's going on in the world um I feel like this is keeping me peaceful and you know just having my daily routine of you know before I start the day I start the day with myself um you know my meditation and journaling and stuff like that, making sure to eat a healthy meal every single day. Mm -hmm. um, then I feel like that's just something that people can do start doing right now. Even if you aren't vegan or anything like that, create a routine for yourself. Um, so that way, when it's time to go back to work, you're not looking crazy and just <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like I don't know what to do because I had all this free time. I wasn't working and now it's time to go back to work. You don't know what to do because your time is just like all it's different now. Um, so, you know, have a healthy meal, have a routine, something to do in the morning. Um, and what else can you do? One question for you. Ricky Tyson has asked, what kind of spices do you use the most? I love smoked paprika. Like mm, you cannot tell life. me that I'm not a chef. <laughs> without <laughs> that smoked paprika. So I just... I, I use that all the time. I get it from Trader Joe's. Um, I'll use um, garlic, of course, garlic powder, um, some onion powder. I even use it, even if I use the whole garlic and whole onion, I still use the, the spice. <laughs> it's just a little razzle dazzle in the meal. Um, what else do I use? I use um, some coriander, some cumin, deciding, depending on the meal that I'm making. Um, I'll use some curry, depending on the meal that I'm making. I still have some curry spices that I had brought back when I went to Jamaica last year or a couple of years ago. Um, so I still use that. Um, what else? Those are the, the, the main ones. Um, yeah, I use, a, I use a garlic salt which is absolutely incredible. It's a grinder. So it grinds the salt and grinds the garlic into the food. Mm -hmm. And I just recently bought from Costco an organic vegetable spice mix. Mm -hmm. I think it has like 30 different spices in it. So yeah. I've been, I've been throwing that into everything, which has been incredible. 
Mm-hmm. Trader so that, Joe's also yeah. has one. It's like a 21 seasoning mix or something like yeah. that. I use that sometimes. I don't even know what it tastes like because I'm throwing so much stuff in it. So I, I can't say if it's really making a big difference in my dish. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is literally like the kitchen sink. Right. It's every, it's every, I mean, you look through the whole list of spices and it doesn't mean anything from lemon peel to, mm -hmm. you know, black pepper, to salt, to garlic, to coriander, cumin. It is right. everything. But it's delicious. It's really good on sautéed vegetables, which is what mm -hmm. I I sautéed up the greens that I get in my CSA box. And it last night that went in there, and it was it was really good. And it, it yeah. feels good to eat greens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I yes. just um, you know, I'll go to the grocery store and I'll just get a bunch of different greens, like some mustard greens, some kale greens. Um, and I'll just do just a big batch of cook of, you know, just cooking them a big batch and just put it in a bowl and just eat it throughout the week. Uh, so that way I don't have to worry about what am I going to have today? Well, I got my greens and then whatever, whatever else I'm going to have with it. Um, uh, but right. I just, or I'll just eat, you know, a little bit of my greens every day. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So let's talk about prosperities since yeah. you, you mentioned a little bit of it, right? So mm -hmm. one of the things that you've done at the events is you have a booth where you sell your shirts and your sweatshirts and uh, you kick ass. I, just, I, I mean, as you know, I keep track of how my vendors do and being that, you know, we, we spend the whole week together when we go to these events. So I, I get to like have dinner with you after and you, and you're just like, how'd you do Brittany? Oh, I did, I did fairly well. And it's like, yeah, you killed it. <laughs> For a shirt vendor, you killed it because, you know, shirt vendors, there's a lot of them typically, and you do really, really well. I, why do you think that is? Because that's maybe, I mean, obviously you are a part of that because of the sales. You also speak, so that helps. Mm -hmm. And your, your, it's, your shirts are very simple. They say something very poignant, but they're also very simple. Mm -hmm. And what do you what do you think it is? What do you that, that makes it so that you kill it at the events? And I have some sharp vendors that are just like just break even, maybe. Um. So when people come to my booth, like I like I like to run my mouth. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like to talk to people. I like to interact with people. I like to you know know what brought you here. Are you vegan? Are you not? You know where are you at in life? You know I want I want to know who I'm selling to. Just as you know, just as much as they want to know who they're buying from. I want to know who I'm selling to. Um, and I and I feel like I bond with every person that, you know, purchases from me. And I feel like we, whenever we have this conversation, there's some level of, you know, where we just connect and where we can relate to each other um, so much, where something that might've happened in my life, something similar might've happened in their life and vice versa. Um, and then we just, you know, we just connect as humans, um, not just me trying to sell you a t-shirt. Um, and so I just feel like I also have, you know, a really good mission behind, you know, my t-shirts. I want to go out into the communities and, you know, help people and especially in the low income communities, because that's who's, you know, suffering the most, um, mm -hmm. you know, with their food because they don't have access to these healthy foods. They can't go down the street and go to Whole Foods and, you know, get a bunch of kale, even though the kale might be cheap, they don't have access to it. Um, so I'm, you know, still trying to wiggle my way, you know, through, um, you know, how to reach these neighborhoods and how to provide for these neighborhoods. So that way it can be an ongoing basis. Um, but yeah, just, you know, connecting with people and, you know, picking out a shirt from them that I find that I feel might, you know, be relative to them, even if, cause a lot of people that come to do buy a t-shirt, they're not vegan. So some of them will be like, I, I'm not vegan. So I, I can't wear that shirt. But I'm like, you can wear this one because you like plants. <laughs> so this one might be more relative to you. So you can do that one. Um, and some people, they just, you know, they just want to support. Um, and it's just, I'm, I meet some of the best people at the Veg Fest. Like, they are some of the most incredible people, you know, as customers. I'm like, sometimes I just like, call me. You don't want to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> because that you know everybody's just so awesome so uh, I think that's why you know when we you know have these events that they go so well because the people that come out are great and we just we connect really well that's really cool you brought up something really important in, in, in talking about your shirts you touched on food deserts mm -hmm. 
which is uh, gray is come and spoken at Wilmington and in Wilmington. And I didn't have, I had no idea that he would be speaking on, I don't really, I don't really talk about what you're going to talk about when you speak at the events. I just say, just be interesting mm-hmm. and make sure no one's repetitive. <laughs> that's, yeah. like, that's, that's about as much hands-on as I am with the speakers. Uh-huh. And I probably already know you and I probably already have seen you and heard you speak or I know you personally and feel comfortable that you're not gonna like screw things up. So Gray talked about food deserts and you just touched on it. Mm-hmm. And right now that's probably incredibly, uh, it's impactful in the moment because mm-hmm. of the fact that, you know, the people who are out there working are the people who are not as affluent as other people who have the luxury of being able to stay home right. and have food delivered and right. have food at their fingertips that is like kale and leafy greens and healthy and beans and access to pretty much pretty much anything that you right. could want. And then you've got the areas that you don't have access to you want. You see the healthcare, not the healthcare, the health of the people is absolutely it's it's horrible. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's a part of our society that I mean, to be blunt, we just don't give a shit right. about, you know, we don't, we don't, we, we have what we have and, and, and this is speaking in general, this is how I feel. We have what we have and it doesn't matter that they don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that, that's a problem. That's a right. really big problem. Right. And of course it, it tends not to be the people that are my skin color, mm-hmm. right? It tends to be people who are people of color right. or, you know, different nationalities. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it, it, I mean, what do you think we can do? What do you think? What do you think people can do to make a difference to help? It got really um, serious. <laughs> so I and it's and it's something that you know I've been thinking about a lot. You know, how can I get more into these communities? How can other people, you know, get into these communities? Because you know we can't just go knocking on doors and be like, "Hey, can I go grocery <laughs> shopping for you?" or something like that. You know, right. so it's like, you know, how how can we do it? And so recently, I've been thinking about. Um, connecting with the services that do ship food, like CSAs or um, any other food shipping service. Um, You know, how can I collaborate with with, with them to, you know, see if we can get into these neighborhoods? But then it's, then we have to figure out which neighborhoods are we going to help, you know? Mm -hmm. So how, how can we get that information? So I did come across the contact. So hopefully cross your fingers, you know, that, you know, I can get, the information that's necessary. Uh, So that way we can go into these neighborhoods. But uh, for people who are struggling, you know, there are churches out there that are, you know, giving food out. Um, My mom, she just told me about a church and I cannot remember for the life of me, the name of the church, but they're giving food out, Um, you know, collect, you know, connect with your local food banks um, to see, because they're giving food out as well. You might have to be in the long line, you know, for the food, but, you know, there are, you know, organizations out there that are helping. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is actually just see if I can create a list and put it out there as far as which organizations are helping until I can also get out there myself. Um, <clears throat> even, you know, up up north, Benny the Vegan, he is, um, mm-hmm. you know, out there feeding the block. So, um I don't know his cash app, but follow him, Gangster Vegan Organics. And he, yep. you know, he has his cash app information, you know, donate some money or donate some food because he's going out into the streets um, and he's feeding people. They're cooking food at home and they're going out and feeding it, which I think is amazing. You know, And it's all organic. Yeah, Everything he's all doing, organic. all the food that he's giving away is organic. And he, he, he posts live about what he's doing. I donated when he first started. Mm-hmm. And he's doing that in in Pennsylvania, yeah, in the where he's located, mm-hmm. and that is that is very true. That's gangster vegan, yeah. And he is, I mean, he was at Vegfest last year with his food. He's, I mean, he spoke in, you know, he he spoke in the the year prior. I let him. He did like a little thing with Vegan Evan mm-hmm. at the event, and he's incredibly persistent. If there's yeah. any human out there that's that's, <laughs> yeah. really, you're not persistent until you've met Vinny. Right. Because he, he, <laughs> he really, really, 
he's, he's, he's really good at he, this is what he wants and he will pester you until you pretty much say okay <laughs> <laughs> i know because i did <laughs> i said okay i'll figure out how to do this yeah you know so, and he's got the sweetest children yeah they're just yes. really beautiful kids Mm -hmm. yes that's a great i'm glad you i'm glad that you brought that up because you can donate for him to him to feed people in you're in another area than where you live but that's not a terrible thing to help people outside of your own community as well right so i really appreciate that because i know that you are i mean part of how i posted about you is that you're just like you're just an incredible person thank you you're welcome well it's true <laughs> and you it's not here today it, okay. <laughs> Oh no! Don't cry, because uh, then you'll make me cry. And then people are just crying, and that'd be really weird. And but you, 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 you just always want to. You want to help, and you want to facilitate change, and mm -hmm. and you, you, you exude that. And I think, and you're going back to my question of why people buy from you. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's why you said it. If people are they they gravitate towards you you engage with them sales is engaging with people they they buy what you have and you know what you have is actually really cool as well so it's not like they're buying something and it gets thrown into like the back of their laundry and they right. don't ever wear it that's not the case so right. and it's cool and, to go out you know sometimes and you just see a random person with your hoodie on or with yes. a, you know shit i'm like oh my god this <laughs> it is really like, cool i know <laughs> Like this um, but it's it's just a really really good feeling because I'm like I know somebody had to stop them and talk to them about their shirt, and I know that they had a really got a great conversation. And it's because if I'm having these conversations with people, I know that everyone else is when they go out. And like my favorite T-shirt to wear out is the one that says "Got Nine Dairy Milk." And sometimes I'll purposely stand next to the dairy aisle <laughs> <laughs> and reach for my coconut milk. And one guy was like, I'm feeling really judged right now. And I'm like, <laughs> why? Why do you feel judged? <laughs> and he was like, well, you know, you got that shirt on and I'm reaching for my dairy milk. And you're, you're, you know, you're just, I feel like you're judging me. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And, you know, we really have a non-judgmental conversation about the dairy industry and about dairy and why you, why it's shit for us you know why we shouldn't be drinking and and he put his milk back and he was like i'm gonna try this you know this non-dairy milk and if i like it i'm gonna come get it i'm like all right and then that's <laughs> that's how it goes i'm like it's like some silent activism going on here with the t-shirt so um i love it and i'm not really a confrontational person but you, it's probably hard to believe but <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> no i don't i no definitely not you yeah that's I mean, I've spent enough time with you uh, that I'm sad that we don't have our 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 veg fest weeks. I mean, yeah. it was going to be like six weeks of Brittany time, you know, <laughs> like hanging out. And I saw that Troy is watching, and Troy would have been right there with us. I mean, that's like yeah. the that's the veg fest core team, yeah. right? I mean, I mean that's. Well, Tara, something terrible. I was telling Kathy the other day, like, I'm missing this veg fest. Like, are we going to get it up and running anytime soon? Like, I miss you guys. <laughs> I know that's I mean I was thinking about you know, who to invite to do these talks and I was like Brittany yeah. <laughs> we're the time about Brittany so let's go into the fact that you're on a vegan athlete panel mm -hmm. right you're sitting next to Aaron Fergus you know all muscles you know Katia all muscles mm -hmm. uh, Troy sends Troy sends air hugs and he says miss ya yeah miss you too Troy even though you didn't miss respond you. to my my text sending you a picture of my vegan sushi the other day. So <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, he didn't even respond. He might be jealous. So <laughs> I mean, so you're on this vegan athlete panel and Dr. Betty, who I'll do a live with as well soon. Cause she's, I mean, I just have to, I think technology wise, we have to work that out. Yeah, but on Facebook, even though I know she hates it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, she's, I mean, what, she doesn't really have time because, well, she's not sleeping. She's just running. And right. when you, when we do Dr. Betty, when she does this talk, you have to, you have to listen because yes. she's the most fit human on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, any doubts about, and I think there are no doubts about that. 
and she's her story is incredible and she, we love her and she was going to come out to events this year too because she can come anywhere anytime yeah and it's pretty much i was like you come to any event because she's a crowd pleaser mm -hmm. <laughs> people love her story mm -hmm. and the fact that she runs more than she sleeps or eats and she's yeah. all raw she's she doesn't i can't feed her because she eats like <laughs> an apple <laughs> and like that's no more no food no cooked food she only eats her food so i can't i can't even feed her so but so you're on this athlete panel so tell us what you talk about when you're on there because like i said you're for the the most of the people watching most likely you're the everyday person mm -hmm. um i know there was one time in my life where i was like i want to be big and strong i want to do that bodybuilding stuff but then i'm like that just it's not me um <laughs> uh, it's even a struggle to even just do regular workouts because um i don't enjoy it a whole lot but i know that it's necessary and so for me in order for me to really get into the best shape of my life i was like i have to get a trainer um and that's just what works for me it might not work for everybody else some people are just so self-motivated and they love working out so much they're able to go out and do it on, on their own and i i bow down to those type of people i bow down to you and i <laughs> worship you because you know it takes a different type of discipline um but having a trainer you know it improved my discipline not just in training but just in all areas of my life because i'm a firm believer that how you do one thing is how you do everything so if you're coming up to, you know, to your workouts, half-assing it, you're going to get half-assed results. Um, and that's what I was doing at first. I was like, oh, I can't do another leg lift. And my, <laughs> my trainer was like, do it, you know, and so I'm, I'm doing it. So I noticed that, you know, that discipline and that follow through just trickled down into all areas of my life, projects I was working on. Even making my bed in the morning, it's like, I can't do anything without my bed being made up. And it has to be made up. <laughs> you know? So, um, but, you know, having that trainer making, you know, having that accountability was important for me. Someone to check in if I didn't, you know, show up to my workouts, you know, where was you at? Why didn't you work out? And it better be a damn good excuse of why you didn't show up. And I'm like, oh, I was too tired. But right. she was, you know, having somebody be on my ass about, getting in shape and I knew how important it was. So I was like, okay, if, you know, I sent her a picture of what I wanted to look like. <laughs> so, um, Hey Jeffrey. Um, so once I showed her that picture, she was like, and I would be doing my workouts and I would, you know, I would be like, Oh, I'm like, I can't go no more. She was like, you're not going to look how you want to look that picture. You showed me, you're not going to look like that. If you lay down and for, you know, give up on this workout. So, um, you know, after weeks and weeks of fighting with my trainer, <laughs> you know, I finally got it like, OK, I'm starting to enjoy this. Um, but I also had to do other things that I enjoyed. So going outside to work out because I hated working out in my room all the time. It's cramped up in here and I need some space to do my jumping jacks. <laughs> so, you know, going outside and doing my workouts there, running hills. And I just like being out in nature, you know, the sun, the trees, the birds and all that other stuff that's, you know, seeing that in abundance and just being out there in that is motivates me, you know, just to keep going. So, um, again, if I can do <laughs> get up at six and five, six in the morning to work mm -hmm. out again, I feel like anybody can do it because I hated it and I did not want to do it, but I did it. And it was, it's become life changing for me. Um, not just, you know, in my physique, but just in life overall. So um, for anybody who <clears throat> wants to work out or who wants to get in shape, but they can't find that motivation, figure out why you want to get in shape in the first place. Um, you know, like it can't just be, I want to lose weight. Why do you want to lose weight? You know, why? Do you want to get skinny? Why do you want to have a six pack? Why do you want to look the way you want to look? Because you obviously you want to impress somebody <laughs> that or you just, you know, you want to look good naked or whatever, whatever your <laughs> case is, you know, you have to be real with yourself and, you know, stop, stop putting on the front pretty much, you know, create your why, why do you want to do it? Be real with you because this is your life. Nobody's going to work out for you. Nobody's going to live this life for you. 
um, create your why and go from there and start little by little. You know, if you can't wake up at six in the morning, try, try waking up at seven. And then next week, try waking up at six. Um, start going outside. Just go for a walk. If you can't run a mile, go walk a mile. So just start little increments because those little things that you do day in and day out are going to make the biggest impact in your life. So. That was some fantastic advice. Thank you. Yeah. That was like really, really good. Thanks. I wonder if like, do you feel like you have enough of a background to help lead other people to their why and to exercise? <clears throat> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> as far as being a personal trainer, no. Because, and I disrespect personal trainers so much after learning what it takes to learn, you know, about how the body operates, the, mu the muscle groups, the calorie count and all that stuff. I don't count calories. I don't do none of that. I like to keep it simple um, because you can still get results by keeping it simple. Um, if you, unless you're training, you know, like Aaron and, and other bodybuilders, you have to count calories and all that stuff. But, you know, for the average Joe like myself, I'm not counting calories. I'm not doing none of that. Um, because I still see results. Um, but I, I just have a different respect for trainers because I see what it takes in order to learn all that information. Um, but I do, you know, I coach women, I work with women in particular, and I coach women to, you know, develop a why, you know, why did you come to me for one, but why do you want to make these changes in your life? What are your life goals? And why do you want to make these changes? And then from there, we map out, you know, a roadmap on how to develop these changes. And at first it was me, you know, coaching people to help them with their diet and stuff like that. But Honestly, that got boring to me. And I got tired of talking to people about soup and salad <laughs> and smoothies. <laughs> but um, it was one woman that I coached. And, you know, while we talked about making changes in her diet and, you know, how it was, you know, helping her digestion and stuff like that, we also noticed a lot of other changes just happening in her life overall. Um, and I was like, this is what I love. This is what I want to stand for is helping someone change their, you know, their life and helping them to step into the next best version of themselves. And so for me, that starts with changing your mindset before we even go into working out and, you know, changing the foods that you eat, you got to change your mindset first, because once you change your mind, everything else will follow. The body will follow the discipline, everything else, everything else follows after you change your mind. Because you can't just go in doing all these radical changes. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to stop. You're going to go back to square one. And then 30 days later, you're going to be like, damn, what if I was doing all this for the, those past 30 days? I would have been so far along. And then you would have been wishing that you didn't give up. Now you're depressed. <laughs> you know? depressed. You know, now you're feeling like shit because you gave up. 30 days, you know, in two weeks into making any changes. So, um, you know, start with making these small changes in your mindset and what you're doing on a daily basis, creating a routine for yourself. And then from there, when you start making these, you know, physical changes within yourself and with the foods you eat, you start to see more results and you don't want to go back. You don't want to give up because you already have that mindset. It's like, okay, I'm mentally, I'm here. You know, if I can make these other changes, then I can do anything. And then once you stick with that, it's like you feel unstoppable. And things just, you know, positive things just start attracting to you because you're in a different vibration, you know. So that's that's how I my coaching kind of changed because, I, you know, I wanted to help women, women in particular, because I feel like we, I can connect with them more and I bond with them better. And men... They end up wanting to just go out on a date. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I had to stop. I was like, look, do you want to talk about plants? Do you want to talk about what we're going to eat? No. no. So I had to stop that. But, <laughs> you know, with the women, it's just like, I, I feel like I'm helping women that were also in a place in my life that I was before. And so it's like, I know that, you know, I know how you feel. And I know how you're going to feel once this is all over with. You're going to thank yourself, you know, for going through with it. And you're going to be like, this is the best choice I've ever made in my life. So, 
So yeah. that's awesome. And you might part of the part of the reason for asking the question was that maybe we can we can do something together. Mm -hmm. We can do some live stuff and and you know help people on that front. Yeah, because that that would be really cool. Yeah, I'm so down with that. So down. okay, well, let's just add that to you know a way to figure it out and make it happen. Right. Put it in my pocket. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's already up there. So, well, you know, I mean, we have the time. So we can totally do that. Well, let me say that everyone who's watching, thank you for watching. And please go to our Virtual Veg Fest YouTube channel and like it, subscribe to it, and watch the videos on there to help us grow that. Please go to Virtual Veg Fest and check it out. We are actively adding vendors to the site, one of which will have to be, I'm pretty sure we talked about this already, right? To add you to the Virtual Veg Fest? I, I think so, but I don't know. I, I think we, <laughs> I think it was in passing or so I'll have to add you to the site so you can get on there and you can upload and create your store so you can sell your shirts on there too, which would be wonderful because Virtual Veg Fest is a partnership between Plant-Based Network and Triangle Veg Fest. So it's nonprofit run. And every time you shop there, you not only help our vendors, but you help the nonprofits as well, which is really cool. So Brittany, can you tell people where to find your book and how to find you if they want to reach out and get coached or their why, uh, learn about, you know, you more, not for a date though. This is, this is like <laughs> business wise. And so everyone knows out there, she's beautiful. Yes, we know that, but however, <laughs> be respectful and, and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, you can find Holistic Mindfulness on Amazon, and it is available for on Amazon Prime, so you can get it in two days. Well, I don't know if it's two days since everything's going on, but right. um, Holistic Mindfulness on Amazon um, for a hard copy. Um, if you want a digital copy, which you can get to your inbox immediately, you can go to www.superveganpowers.com, uh, which is my website. Um if you want to get any t-shirts and hoodies, um, you can go to www.prosperitiesclothing.com. And that's P-R-O-S-P-E-R-I-T-E-E-Z clothing.com. And um, let me know if you want a hoodie because hoodies, is, they all got to go. It's getting hot outside. So it's like, they all got to go. So shoot me a DM. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Brittany Sade, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-S-A-D-E, underscore, underscore, two underscores, Brittany Sade, underscore, underscore, on Instagram. Um, shoot me a message. I would love to connect with you. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. I, I tagged the wrong account on Instagram when I posted about you earlier. Whoops. Uh, I know. I, I did Super Vegan Powers. Do you have that on Instagram? Yeah. So if you also search Super Vegan Powers, that should also um, show up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> that's what was tagged. Okay. Very good. Very good. I was like, uh, uh oh. I think I think I knew that too. But you know, it all goes out the window sometimes when you're just trying to get something out out right. the door. Right. So I really appreciate you. And I, I'm so glad that you, you joined us today and that everyone got to know you a little bit better if they didn't know you already and that they can continue to get to know you just as I have, because it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I look forward. I love you too. I look <laughs> forward when, you know, I can see you in person and give you a big hug. Hopefully okay, that you know, will uh, be I don't know, 2021, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> please outside, open back up. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, well, the, the only thing about a virus is that we can't control a virus. Right. And for all control freaks, it's a really good lesson. <laughs> a really, you really know, good even lesson. Even though we're on this quarantine, I can honestly say that it's not much different than my current life <laughs> because because I'm already in the house a lot and I only literally just go to the grocery store or veg fest. <laughs> so, right. um, but I still miss being able to leave the house and, you know, drive up, you know, the highway to go see my family or friends, you know, whenever mm -hmm. I wanted to. So not being able to do that is, you know, kind of having its toll on me because I miss all my friends and family, Ooh, they the dogs. you know, so hopefully this is all over with. And I can go be annoying to all the people that I love. Yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't be annoying. <laughs> but yeah, so Ricky asked, when is the next vegan fest? And 
that's a really good question. There's one slated for July 19th in, in Greenville, South Carolina, but I have my doubts that will actually happen. And then we move, everything got moved to the fall. So October and November, October, Asheville, October is Wilmington and Nashville is in November. And then Triangle is supposed to be in August, which is Durham, North Carolina. And I'm not sure. I, 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 at this point, I say 50% possibility that we'll have an in-person event in 2020. Yeah. I, I just don't know if, if I don't, I don't believe that people are going to want to put one to seven, 8,000 people in the same spot. Right. The events tend to be pretty crowded. It'd be very difficult to social distance. Right. It, it just part of the feel of an in-person event is being crowded, even though everyone hates it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good for the vendors. It's really good for the energy of the event. It's part of the reason that people come out. Then claustrophobic people hate it. They get complaints, but, but for the overall it's really good for the events yeah. and it's once again, good for the vendors so that it can make money because they're there to make money. And yeah, I virtual veg That's, that's our veg fest yeah. for pivot. the time yeah, being. Little, no, it's pivot. the pivot. It's the pivot veg fest. Yes. Yeah. These are all on there. I'm looking into live music to stream on virtual veg And we have vendors on there and we keep adding vendors. Like I've added a few in the last two days. And then Brittany will get on there and you can shop just like you would. And I'm going to do lives with the vendors so that you can learn more about their products specifically and who they are. And like you would, if you went to a vendor's booth, just like you go to Brittany's booth at the event, you learn all about who she is and then you buy her product. We're going to do that with the vendors as well. So that's the current future based on the way the world is at the moment, yeah. because that's what you have to do when the world changes and you still need income and right. you want all your vendors to survive yeah, and get through this to the other side, because yeah. that's really what we're looking at now is making sure that people actually make it through so that they can be at these festivals with us when we can be in person again, because it's scary. Yeah. It's a scary, scary time. Yeah. But thank you for that question, Ricky. I appreciate it. Everyone else who was watching and we look forward to next time, which is on Saturday at 4 PM. What's for dinner with Kathy Hester. Yes. And that question will be answered on Saturday because we don't know what's for dinner because she right. hasn't decided yet. <laughs> and she's going to be cooking something up so that you can learn all about like it's a live cooking demo. Uh, the only bad part about it being virtual is we can't eat the food. So, right. but you can be at home and you can make it yourself and you can eat it then <laughs> and you can eat yeah. as much as you want because you, you've made like it for yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can call Brittany for some exercise tips. <laughs> yeah, for that belly punch because we all got it right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you again. And I love you, Brittany. And love thank you, you for joining us. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.